Welcome to Lesson 4A of ATC Pro. In this lesson, you will watch the computer controllers in action at the Albuquerque facility and learn some basics of how to control one departing aircraft. This will allow you to become familiar with ATC procedures in general and specific procedures for this selected facility. In the next lesson, 4B, you will use the same scenario to try your hand at controlling your first aircraft. First of all, let's get a scenario set up on the duty desk. Make the following settings. In the Available Facilities box, select ABQ Albuquerque Tracon. For weather, set East Flow, wind 080 degrees at 5 knots with few clouds. For traffic generation, set on departures, set commercial to 100%, everything else 0%. For arrivals, set all to 0%. For other, set local VFR to 0%. For the position selection on Albuquerque, set both north and south to computer control. For the time, set from your current time of day to 9.08 on Wednesday. All right, now click the Begin Your Shift button. When the program finishes loading, on the left side of the scope, you will see the flight information strip window. Since there are only computer controllers active right now, there will not be any data strips here, so close the window by clicking on the X in the upper right corner of the window. There is a light blue window on the right side of your screen. It is the COM panel where you select the active radio frequencies. Click on the TX cell and RX cell buttons on the first, second, and third rows here. This enables you to hear radio conversations with the aircraft on the frequencies of the north, south, and tower controllers. You can close this window too for now to get it out of the way. You can always bring back any pop-up window by clicking on the icon on the lower right here. In the blue communications history window on the lower left, you will see the text of the conversations between the aircraft and controller's frequencies activated in the COM panel. Let's set up our scope now with a few things before the departing aircraft appears, so I will pause the simulation by clicking on the icon here on the lower right. Click on the range button on the DCB bar at the top of the scope and it will turn light green. Roll your mouse on top of the button and the scope magnification will zoom in and out. Zoom in until it reads 36 and click to lock it in. Next click on the maps button on the DCB. You will see numbered map buttons. Click on number 14, ZAB SEC, to see the center controller airspace boundaries and frequencies. Next, click on the ARRDEP button on the right of the DCB. These are the airports available in this facility. Click on KABQ. Click on number 309er, Monsanto 2. This is the departure procedure map we will be using for our departing aircraft. I will talk more later about what departure procedures are and show you how to figure out what maps to use for departing aircraft. Departure procedures are sometimes called SIDs. That's all we need to do for now, so click on Done to get back to the scope. Notice there are some map overlays on the scope now that will give us some reference points when controlling. I will unpause now to continue with the scenario. Albuquerque Tower American 1332 is ready to go runway 8. American 1332 fly heading 180, runway 8, cleared for takeoff. 180 cleared for takeoff, runway 8, American 1332. Now I will pause to describe the dialogue between the pilot and controller. Notice in the COM history window, you can see the transcript in lines of text showing the aircraft with the call sign American 1332. Has been cleared for takeoff from runway 8 
and instructed to fly a compass heading of 180 degrees once airborne. The pilot has read back instructions to the controller to acknowledge. The tower controller also tells Flight American 1332 to contact the departure controller on the 123.9er frequency after taking off from runway 8. Notice that 3 is pronounced tree and 9 is pronounced niner in aviation. The pilot of American 1332 has changed to the departure frequency and contacts the controller to say that he is with you climbing at the current altitude of 5,900 feet and has been given the command or clearance by the previous controller to climb up to the altitude of 9,000 feet, but not higher. For example, if the pilot of American 1332 was not given an additional clearance to climb higher than 9,000, he would climb until reaching 9,000, then maintain that altitude until receiving another clearance. Now I will unpause. You see a green S symbol near the center of the scope. This is the data tag of the aircraft. Hover your mouse pointer on the S symbol of the aircraft and the cursor will turn into a circle in a cross symbol. Then left click your mouse cursor on the data tag to expand it. You can show or quick look the data tag of any aircraft this way even if it is not under your control. American 1332 contact Albuquerque on 123.9 Albuquerque on 123.9 American 1332 Albuquerque departure American 1332 is with you climbing out of 6,000 for 9,000 American 1332 radar contact proceed direct Yuglu join the Manson O2 departure Roger direct Yuglu join the Manson O2 departure American 1332 Now I will pause the sim again. The controller has given the pilot a clearance to proceed directly to a waypoint on the departure procedure and that he should follow or join the Monsanto 2 departure procedure. The pilot confirms he has heard the controller with Roger and reads back the commands, ending with his call sign, American 1332. If you want to pause the simulation at any point to study what is going on or turn additional maps on or off, click on the pause icon on the lower right. While the pilot is climbing, notice that he is following the dashed line of the map we turned on earlier. This is the route of the departure procedure, like a highway in the sky. There is a waypoint labeled Mike November Zulu November Oscar that is what the departure procedure is named for. There is a waypoint labeled Foxtrot Alpha Tango 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 and that is what is indicated as the exit fix by the code TANGO in the data tag. Now I will unpause. When the pilot has reached Yankee Uniform Golf Lima Uniform waypoint, he will be given the command by the departure controller to climb to the flight level 200 or 20,000 feet, the highest altitude of the controller's airspace before he is handed off to the center controller on the way to the aircraft's planned destination. He will fly along the route of waypoints of the departure procedure while climbing to a maximum of 20,000 feet. American 1332, climb and maintain flight level 200. Up to flight level 200, American 1332. I will pause the sim again now to describe some things about the aircraft's data tag. You will see the data tag switch between displaying two sets of information, or time sharing. This information has several variations depending on the situation. The position symbol is this S is for the south controller position. The symbol represents the location on the radar of the aircraft and which controller has responsibility for the aircraft. The call sign for commercial aircraft is a three-letter airline code and flight number. The history trail is a series of blue dots that trail along behind the aircraft indicating where it has been that gives a better picture of motion. The leader line is a line that connects the text of the data tag to the position symbol. It can be varied in length manually and extend away from the position symbol in any direction. It will be repositioned automatically when two data tags begin to overlap. 
The exit fix code is the single letter code that indicates the fix or waypoint where the aircraft should depart the sector. In this case, Tango is for fat T's to the southeast. To see a table of fix codes, we can look at the information pop-up window here. Here is Tango for fat T's. On the pronunciation tab, you have a list of all the fixes, waypoints, and procedures names with the proper pronunciations for accurate voice recognitions. Here is fat T's. And farther down, here is Monsanto 2. The aircraft type code is the four-letter aircraft type code. In this example, MD-83 is a McDonnell Douglas 80 medium-sized jet. See the tab of aircraft type codes and pronunciations, also in the information pop-up window. I will unpause so the data tag changes to the alternate version now. Now we see altitude above mean sea level that is adjusted for the current barometric pressure given in hundreds of feet. In this example, 102 is 10,200 feet. Next, ground speed in knots given in tens of knots in this example, 29 is 290 knots. Any wind will increase or decrease the ground speed depending on the direction and intensity. Let's skip ahead now to the next command for the aircraft. As the aircraft gets within a few miles of the departure airspace boundary, the controller will hand off the aircraft to center and will tell the pilot to contact center on 133.65. American 1332 contact Albuquerque Center on 133.65 good day. Albuquerque Center on 133.65 good day American 1332. Notice on the map are shown the names and boundaries of the center sectors with the frequencies to give pilots when handing them off. The aircraft's data tag will reduce to a C for center with the altitude of the aircraft when it is fully under the control of the next controller. I encourage you to watch this lesson a few times to get familiar before moving on to the next lesson, 5A, where you will take control and start giving commands to the aircraft. Click the X in the upper right corner of the scope to end the session.